just a casual reminder that uh, the review sessions are going to go on Monday and Tuesday, right? So Monday and Tuesday are the last review sessions. I already told the people that went to the review session today that I, I will give people their bonus mark uh, for coming to the review session, but I'll give it to them that like halfway through next week or at the end of next week or something like that. Um, did I tell you I'm not here tomorrow? Okay, I'm not here tomorrow. So I, I have some idea of who's coming in. Um, like, if I told you, oh, uh, uh, Bob uh, McNulty was coming in, would that mean anything to you? No, it doesn't mean anything, right? It doesn't, whatever, it doesn't. That, so that's, that's the same, that's the amount of information I know about the person that's coming in to, for me tomorrow. Is that I, I know their name, but I, I don't think I've ever met them before, and I have no idea how strong in chemistry they are. So I just want to let you know is that tomorrow might be a really interesting class. We're going to review pH equations. That's what you're going to be doing. And I might have to resort. I emailed the guest teacher, and I asked, hey, how familiar are you with this? And they, they haven't responded because they emailed that like 10 o'clock last night. But uh, um, depending on their response, I might like videotape a lesson, and I might just get you to watch that lesson on Chromebooks. Do you know what I mean? So maybe bring some headphones or get ready to listen on crappy Chromebook speakers or something like that tomorrow. You know what I mean? So I'll, I'll book out the Chromebooks and then you'll individually or in pairs have to go through a lesson and get their notes and stuff like that. Like it sucks, but it's better than giving the information to somebody who legitimately doesn't know what's going on and having them say, oh, I guess, I don't know, he said this. You know what I mean? So we'll see how it goes. I'm just trying to, just trying to give you a heads up. It's going to be an interesting class tomorrow. Um, we were talking all about Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases, right? What do acids do according to Bronsted-Lowry? They don't always make hydronium. That's the modified Arrhenius definition of an acid. Is that when you add an acid to water, it makes hydronium. That's the modified Arrhenius definition. Jacob, thanks for doing that. Oh, the D word, it donates a proton. That's what I'm talking about, okay? So, you can actually think, you can think about acid-base reactions as, as two bases fighting over a proton. There's a tug of war here for a proton. Now, when I look at this example, chloride is a base. Water is a base because they can accept protons, right? Now, do you know which one of these, water or chloride, which one is the stronger base? Do you know which one, which one has, a, has a stronger pull on that proton? Water. Let's, let's take a look. Break out your data book. Bust out your data book. Okay, pages 8 and 9 in your data booklet. I'm curious, okay? Does anybody know what the strongest acid on this table is? It's perchloric acid. Stomach acid is hydrochloric acid, right? So hydrochloric acid is pretty strong, right? It's pretty good. But what's even stronger than hydrochloric acid? Hydrobromic acid. What's even stronger than hydrobromic acid? Hydroiodic acid. What's even stronger than hydroiodic acid? Perchloric acid. Okay, now I want to be very clear. In aqueous solutions, in solutions involving water, what's the strongest acid that can be present? 
Do you know what acid in here is like the strongest possible acid you could ever have in water? Hydronium. Oh, yeah. That is the strongest acid you can ever have in water. And the reason why is because if you put any of these three things in water, just like what we've got going on here, if you put hydrochloric acid in water, Water is a stronger base than chloride. So water will rip away the hydrogen from the chloride all the time. So if you put a strong acid into water, water's, water's a stronger base, and it, it just rips that proton right off that hydrochloric acid. So you're left with the chloride ion, and you're left with hydronium, okay? Now, so if hydronium is the strongest acid that can exist, that means that none of these things actually exist in water. None of them. And we kind of covered that on the very first day of the semester. Do you remember doing that? Do you remember talking about major entities in solution? Okay, okay. Some, of, some of you are like <laughs> vaguely nodding your head. You're like, yeah, kind of. And most of you are staring blank, so that's fine. Um, okay, hydronium's the strongest acid that can exist. Anything above it immediately turns into hydronium all the time, every time. Now, things below hydronium, what do we call them? Weak acids. Weak acids. We call them weak acids because they don't... 100% react to form hydronium. They a little bit do, but not 100%. Let's look at the bases. I've got my, my, my base column here. Hmm. What do you think is the strongest base that can exist in water? Water? Water is the strongest base that can exist in water. So when you drink a cup of water, you're drinking the strongest basic solution you could possibly imagine? Where is it? Hydroxide is the strongest base that can exist in water. Okay? Anything above it is weaker than it. Okay? So if we, if we had two things and they were fighting over a proton, okay? So I'm, I'm just going to draw a picture. I'm going to put HCO3, but I'm going to draw it weird. Okay, I'm going to go C and then uh, O, 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 and H. So HCO3, if that's okay with you. It looks weird, but that's fine. And then hydroxide. When these two come into contact with each other, this is a hydrogen ion and this is uh, another ion, okay? Now, CO3 is attached to H plus right now, and OH minus is, is, is interacting with the H plus. Let's look at this. CO3 and OH minus, who's stronger? Who's the stronger base? Hydroxide. So who's winning the battle for that proton? Hydroxide. Hydroxide is going to win the battle for that, for that proton. So HCO3 is basically just CO3 2 minus with an H attached to it. Would you agree with that? Like, does that kind of make sense? HCO3 is just CO3 2 minus with an H, a proton attached to it. Now, when you put HCO3 in with hydroxide, that hydroxide will steal the majority of those protons. Because this is a stronger base, because that's a stronger base, and this here is a weaker base, that means the hydrogen is more attached to the stronger base. It's more attracted to it. And the only way you could figure that out is using this table, basically. People have put a lot of work into arranging these substances from strongest acid to weakest acid and weakest base to strongest base. Um, so we're going to go through some notes. We're just going to write some stuff down here because we went through a lot of information. I just want to formalize that information right now. 
Some acids will ionize completely in water. We call them strong acids. Strong acids ionize completely because water is a much stronger base than whatever the conjugate base of that acid is, right? So when we're, when we're trying to think about who's going to win the battle, water is always going to win the battle compared to those strong acid conjugate bases. That's complicated. So um, let's talk about uh, HNO3. When I put HNO3 in water, oh, don't want to do that. Would you agree HNO3 is the same thing as NO3 with an H attached to it? Does that make sense? Like that sounds stupid, but HNO3 is the exact same thing as NO3 with an H attached to it. So there's an NO3 and there's an H2O and they're battling it out for that hydrogen, okay? Who's gonna win the battle for the hydrogen? The NO3 or the water? The water. So that's why these are strong acids, because water is a stronger base than nitrate. Okay? So this happens greater than 99%. This reaction takes place greater than 99%. I don't want to say it takes place 100% of the time, because if, if one out of a trillion doesn't work, then it's technically not 100%. You know what I mean? Yes. So if this is the acid and that's the base, then the hydrogen gets transferred from the acid to the base, and we get H3O plus and NO3 minus. Strong acids have very, very weak conjugate bases. And so if you wanted to, on your data booklet, or in your data booklet, up here, I can't write on mine, it's not going to work. So all of these conjugate bases up here, the conjugate bases of the strong acids, they are inert. They do not react. They do not act like bases, okay? So they're, they're so weak, they don't do anything. Right? Because remember, water is a stronger base than them. So what are they going to do to water? So none of these ever really truly react in acid-base reactions. Okay, These conjugate bases up here are garbage. They don't do anything. Just letting you know. Okay, this is the exact same thing that we're talking about. What's trying, what is this picture trying to represent? It's a CH3COO minus, and what's attached to it? A, a proton, a hydrogen ion, right? So really, what is this thing? What is the whole molecule? This is CH3COOH, right? It's a CH3COO minus with a hydrogen ion or a proton attached to it, right? And there's, there's a tug of war between this thing, a hydrogen ion, and water. I want you to tell me, I want you to tell me who's going to win that battle for the proton. Look at these two bases on your, on your table and say, who's going to win the battle for the, for the proton? Is water a stronger base, or is acetate a stronger base? Water's here, right? Okay. Do you see acetate above it? No, so that means water can't be a stronger base than acetate. Let's look for acetate, CH3COO minus. CH3COO minus, way down there. Who's going to win the battle for that proton? Acetate, because it's the stronger base. Does, does this make sense? Yeah. Kind of? Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, perfect. Uh, weak acids will partially ionize in water. So here we've got a weak acid, and it's reacting with water to make acetate and hydronium, okay? Now, is this products favored or reactants favored? 
If let's say let's say you add a hundred of these, what percentage of them turn into that? One point three percent. So one out of a hundred turn into that. So if we started with a hundred, right, and zero, if one turns into that, then then what are we what are we going to end up with? That. 100, so we're going to end up with 99 and 1. That seems pretty reactance favor to me. Hopefully you can understand that, right? Yeah. So weak acids, weak acids only partially ionize in water. Um, that's because their conjugate base has a stronger affinity for the proton than water does, right? Weak acids have a stronger conjugate base. So uh, in here, we're just going to go through some things. A strong acid holds its uh, hold on to its proton very weakly uh, and easily loses its proton to water. So perchloric acid, uh, HClO4. Is that a strong acid or a weak acid? It's the strongest acid on that table, right? HClO4. So if it ionizes in water, what can you tell me? What kind of an arrow should I use for this reaction? Should I use an equilibrium arrow or should I use a straight arrow? Straight arrow. Okay, that's re because it's greater than ninety nine percent, so it's basically one hundred percent. It's a quantitative reaction. So we're going to turn into hydronium and perchlorate. A weak acid, yeah. Is there any reaction we know of that is a complete 100% reaction? The, that's basically, for the most part, this is kind of like the. I, I don't want to say yes or no, because if I'm being perfectly honest, I don't know. That's the only way I can answer that question. I would imagine. There's lots of reactions out there that are 100%. Um, for example, like the combustion of methane and oxygen, you're never going to be able to get a reverse reaction, so any methane will always combust. You know what I mean? But, but maybe one out of 20 trillion doesn't. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. This, yeah. This, kind of, this isn't really a question. It's just that all over the page. Sure. It, it, There shouldn't be a comma. Oh, it's it's oh. Sorry, yeah, that's my bad. Yeah, it is proton. Yeah, that's okay. I didn't ever claim it to be smart. That's okay. A weak acid holds on to its proton. It is proton very well and does not easily lose it to water. So oxalic acid ionizes to produce hydrogen oxalate in water. What is oxalic acid? Look it up for me. Write down whatever oxalic acid is plus water. Is oxalic acid a strong acid or a weak acid? Weak. It's weak, so it doesn't go greater than 99%. Often, it actually really reacts like less than 10%. So we're going to use equilibrium arrows. It's going to make hydronium. And what else? If oxalic acid loses one proton, what are we left with? We're left with hydrogen oxalate. And you can just look it up, right? Just, you just slide your finger over and that's what you're going to get. <clears throat> okay. When you, buy, when you buy a bottle of perchloric acid, when you buy a bottle of perchloric acid, please don't ever do that, whatever, that's fine. <clears throat> when you buy a bottle of perchloric acid, 
Are you buying a bottle of perchloric acid? No! There's no perchloric acid in there. Maybe one out of a trillion is, you know what I mean? But there's no perchloric acid in there. What is in that bottle? Hydronium and perchlorate, right? That's what's in that bottle. So it's really important that you understand that this isn't reacting. When If I had a bottle of perchloric acid and I like oh, poured it on my hand or something like that, you know what I mean? The perchloric acid isn't reacting with my hand. What in here is a dangerous substance? Hydronium. That's what's reacting with my hand. Does that make sense? Hope, just hopefully we're okay with that. If you buy a bottle of oxalic acid, are you buying a bottle of oxalic acid? Yes. Yes. Because typically, less than 10% turns into this. So 90% of it is still oxalic acid. Only 10% has turned into this. So if you buy a bottle of oxalic acid, 90% is still oxalic acid. So are you buying a bottle of oxalic acid? Yeah, you are. That's the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid. There is none of this in that bottle, but there's still lots of this in that bottle. I don't know, hopefully that makes sense. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to write this down. Now this is the reason why you're not allowed to use your data booklet on the next test, is because we're gonna just butcher this thing. Holy guacamole. So everything up here, you could say two weak. I used to write two though, so that's good. I'm not a complete moron. Two weak to react. They don't. Yeah, there's, those bases are so weak. They don't do anything. Here, what I would say, I, look, I have less room than you do, or I feel like I have less room than you do, is that I would say that these things are too strong in water. Right? They don't actually exist. They don't exist. Please don't take that out of context. <laughs> and then up here, you're going to say strong acids, right? Way down at the bottom, that's the, these are the strongest acids, right? Way down at the bottom, that's the weakest acid. Okay, where's my strongest base, though? At the bottom. And the weakest base. What do you notice about the relationship? The stronger the acid is, the what? The weaker its conjugate base is, right? And hopefully that makes sense, right? Because this strong acid, or this strong acid is just a super, super weak base with a proton attached to it. It's a strong acid because it's such a weak base, right? Its conjugate acid is so weak. That's the reason why that is. Okay, perfect. We're going to come back to this a little bit later. Yeah, we got lots of time. Lots of time. Perfect. Um, there's, there's some uh, diploma questions here. I'll, I'll leave them to you to kind of think about and talk about. Oh, one thing I do want to point out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big time. Absolutely. What do you notice about here? I've got this. When I put this in water, it's like greater than 99%, right? It reacts basically 100%. So what's the K value? What would be the equilibrium constant for something that basically reacts 100%? Do you remember what we wrote down? What's the K value for something that reacts 100%? Very large. So large, it's hard to define. It's like 
uh, 23 million, 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 billion divided by 0.0000000015. You know what I mean? Like it's just not, you can't really define it. It's so easy to mess up that measurement. So all of these K values are so large. When you put this thing in water, they immediately turn into their products, okay? What about these K values? The K values for the weak acids, are these products favored or reactants favored? Reactants. Reactants favored. That means they mostly stay in their acid form, right? They're mostly acids, and then very, very rarely, one out of a hundred, one out of a thousand, one out of a million, okay, will react with water to produce its conjugate base and hydronium. Okay, just, I just want to bring your attention to that. Um, the stronger acids, right, the stronger acids have big Ka's. The weaker acids, what do they have? Tiny Ka's, right? These are tiny, tiny, tiny. These are so tiny. 0. 0.000000000048, right? And this is just... 0.056, you know what I mean? That's way bigger. So just, as long as you're aware. Um, there's some text, or sorry, there's some diploma questions there. Now we're gonna get to the meat and potatoes of what we wanna do today. <laughs> okay, our goal is for me to say, you know, if I could say to you, oh, I'm gonna pour a little bit of this and a little bit of this together and I want to know what I'm going to get. I want you to tell me what will the products of that reaction be. Now you don't know how to do that yet, okay? You kind of know, right? An acid and a base usually make water. Well, that was in the Arrhenius definition of an acid and a base. Now anything can be an acid and a base, right? So we can make pretty much anything. In order to predict the outcome of an acid-base reaction, we need to refer to the table of relative acids, uh, acids and bases. That's this thing, okay, so we, you just gotta have that handy. According to collision reaction theory, what that means is when this thing collides with this thing, the stronger base will rip off the proton, correct? Does that make sense? So when this thing collides with that thing, the stronger base will react. So according to collision reaction theory, a proton will only transfer when an acid collides with a base that is a better proton attract, right? A stronger base will, will rip it off. In general, we need to look through all of the major entities present in a solution and identify the strongest acid in that list and the strongest base in the list. So if I gave you five things, you should be able to look through that list of five things and find the strongest acid and the strongest base and react them together. That's the idea. Would it be pretty easy, would it be relatively easy, if I just gave you five things, could you just look through them and see, oh, this one is the highest up on the acid, so it's the strongest acid. Oh, this other one, is the lowest down on the base, so it's the strongest base. Do you know what I mean? That's really all you're doing. That's the, the whole point of this, is just to see what's the strongest acid and the strongest base. In order to do that, we gotta review some stuff. Strong acids ionize 100% and immediately turn into hydronium, right? So, if I gave you, if I said you had a bottle of HI, is HI really a bottle of HI? Why? How do you know? Because it's a strong acid. It's above water on the table, right? You know what I mean? Or it's above hydronium on the table. So the major entities of this, if I said you had this, you don't actually have this. What do you have? Hydronium. You have hydronium. What else do you have? Iodide. And what else do you have? Water. Why, yes, why do you know you have water? What, what in here is telling you you have water? Aqueous, right? Do you see how, 
when I listed the major entities, did I write a reaction? Is, the, is it something plus something, arrow something? No. What does the word list mean to you? Write one thing, comma, write another thing, comma, write another thing. You're, this isn't a chemical reaction. I'm just saying this thing is in our bottle, check. This thing is in our bottle, check. This thing is in our bottle, check. That's what we're doing. We're just listing them all, okay? Weak acids often ionize less than 10%. So most of it doesn't turn into hydronium. In fact, we're going to assume none of it turns into hydronium right now. Is that okay? All weak acids just assume they stay the way they are. So for example, if I said I had HNO2 aqueous, if you had a bottle of HNO2, is it really HNO2? Why? 10%. Do you know that it's weak? Check on the list. Is it for sure weak? Yes. Yes, right? Absolutely. So this thing, this thing ionizes less than 10%. We're going to assume it, it, it ionizes like less than 1%. So 99% stays the way it is. So when you buy a bottle of, of nitrous acid, yeah, you, you are actually buying a bottle of nitrous acid. But what else is in your bottle? Water, right? There's water in your bottle of nitrous acid. Okay, perfect. Water. Water is always present during aqueous chemical reactions. Aqueous ions. Any ionic compound that is soluble, come on, that is soluble must be listed as aqueous ions, not as the full compound, okay? So for the most part, I'm always going to give you something that's soluble. For example, if I said I had sodium bicarbonate, otherwise known as nacho. Sorry, it's baking soda, right? Well, not Coke. Yeah. <laughs> if you're, <laughs> you're going to be deliberate about it. Well, yeah. I mean, you can just switch the CTA. Uh, no, we can't. We're not going to. Okay, what is this thing? When I buy, when I buy baking soda and I dissolve it in water, which is actually literally just what this bottle is, it's just got an indicator in it. When I buy a bottle of baking soda and I dissolve it in water, do you have NaHCO3? No, you don't. Because when I take this, ah, when I take this and I check out my table of solubility, um, I don't see HCO3 on here, but I see group one ion. Sodium is a group one ion. Does sodium form a precipitate? Is sodium insoluble with HCO3? Do you see it down here? No. Nope. So it's totally soluble. And remember, when ionic compounds dissolve, they break apart from each other. The positive and the negative break away from each other. So what the hell is the positive thing that's in here? Sodium. Sodium. So we're going to get sodium ion. This is why we reviewed major entities at the beginning of the semester. Okay, we got sodium ions. What else do we have? What's the only other thing in here? If I ignored sodium, what would be left? Hydrogen carbonate. You have a hydrogen carbonate ion as well. HCO3 minus aqueous. And what else do you have in your solution? Water. Okay, um, hopefully that's okay with you. Uh, we're just going to move on. Now, predicting the extent of a reaction. Remember, the base, who's, who's going to win the battle? Is it the, the, the base that's above or the base that's below? The base that's below, right? And so um, what we can say about a reaction is like, Let's just look at an example. Let's look at this top example here. We've got NH4 plus and H2PO4 minus, okay? 
Now, what's going on here is it's, it's pretty complicated, but let's just try and find those things on, on our periodic, or on our table of acids and bases. Now, in this particular example, is ammonium acting as an acid or a base? How do you know that it's acting as an acid? It's donated. Yeah, it starts as NH4 and finishes as NH3, so it's acting as an acid. Okay. So, so this thing's an acid, this thing's acting as a base. Let's try and find NH4 and H2PO4 on the table. But you need to look for NH4 under the acids table, under the acid column, and you need to look for H2PO4 under the base column. Did you find NH4 plus as an acid? Yep. It's way down here, right? Is that a particularly strong acid or a particularly weak acid? Yes. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to think about ammonium as, as basically NH3 that has a proton attached to it. Are we okay with that? Now, how strong is the hold on, on the proton? How, is NH3, is that a pretty strong base or is that a pretty weak base? Strong. It's pretty strong as far as bases go, right? So does it have a pretty uh, strong hold on the proton or a pretty weak hold on the proton? It's, it's got pretty strong. There's only a few others that are stronger than it, right? Now let's look for H2PO4 in the base column. It's way up here. Who's going to win the battle for that proton? The H2PO4 or the NH3? NH3. The NH3, okay? So... What's more likely? Is our, is, our, is our proton more likely to end up with the H2PO4? Or is it more likely to end up with the NH3? H2. Which one was the stronger base? H2. The NH3, right? So this is going to be reactants favored. Does that kind of make sense? There's a super easy trick here, OK? It's called uphill, downhill. Now, when we found those things, when we found those things, we've got NH4 way down here, and we've got H2PO4 way up here. Starting from the left, going to the right. Is that uphill or downhill? Uphill. That's uphill. Do, do things normally roll uphill, or do you have to force them to go uphill? You have to force them. That means that this is going to take a lot of energy, and, and the proton will naturally go in the downhill direction. So, so what that means is, is this is uphill. This is going to be reactants favored. That's just the way you have to think about it. And I've got this little picture here straight from your textbook, is that if something is downhill, products are favored. If something is uphill, then reactants are favored. Okay, so when, when we look at these two things, we find that they're uphill. Uphill means reactants favored. So what, what percentage could I put for reactants favored? Is this going to react like greater than 50% or less than 50%? This is going to be less than 50%. Or, or we could say reactants favor. We're going to do one more, and then I'm going to get you to do two. HCN and HS minus. Find HCN and find HS minus, but find them on opposite sides of the, of the table. Okay? Find one in the acid and one in the base column. Yeah, HCN is acting like the acid, right? So is it uphill or is it downhill? It's uphill? 
So it's, is it products favored or is it reactants favored? It's reactants favored. So again, this is going to be less than 50%. Reactants favored. I'm going to give you like 30 or 40 seconds to do the next two. Logan, I just want to let you know that that table is not necessarily totally complete. Okay, so no, 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 I'm just, I'm just saying, like, if you can't find something, then no, use okay. your table. That's from an older version of the periodic table, something that was published in, like, 2004 or something. I'll give you 10 seconds to finish up. Okay, the third reaction there is HNO2. Would you agree HNO2 is acting like the acid in that case, right? Yeah. And OOCCOO2 minus, so that's oxalate ion, so that's acting as the base. Now, is this uphill or downhill? Downhill. So is it products or reactants favored? Downhill. Products favored. Boom. Love it. Greater than 50% or products favored. Now, the next one, HSO4 minus and HSO3 minus. You can find both of these on both sides of the table. So you have to think to yourself, is it acting as an acid or is it acting as a base? HSO4 minus, is it acting as an acid or a base? An acid. So you got to find it on the acid side, right? So we're going to take a look. HSO4 minus, and where is HSO3 minus? Directly above it. Is that uphill or downhill? Uphill. Uphill. So that's reactants favorite as well. Okay. All right. Perfect. So then less than 50% and reactants favorite. Nice. Here we go. So that's, with that out of the way, we can finally accomplish our task of today. Woo! Here we go. So rules for predicting acid-base reactions. Number one, this is called the five-step method. Here, let's just, in brackets, let's put that. This is the five-step method. Now I'm, now I'm hyper-conscious of my grammar. Am I allowed to put a number hyphen word? Is that a thing? Can I do that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. I'm just coming Okay. List all major entities. That's the first thing we got to do. Then, once we've listed the entities, label every single one of them as a possible acid or a possible base. So go through the list and say, oh, this thing could be an acid. Oh, this thing could be a base. Blah, 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 blah. Find the strongest acid and the strongest base in the list. Now, does it make sense that the strongest acid will always react with the strongest base? Does that make sense? Those are the two things. One really, really, really wants to give away a proton, and one really, really, really wants to accept a proton, right? So it's almost like a match made in heaven for them. So the strongest acid will always react with the strongest base. We're going to finish by telling people if it's products favored or reactants favored. Let's do this thing. Acetic acid and sodium hydroxide are mixed together. Now what I want to do, I just really quickly, I want to write down the formula for acetic acid. Does anybody off the top of their head know what acetic acid is? COOH, aqueous, and sodium hydroxide. Anybody off the top of their head know what sodium hydroxide is? NaOH. Yeah, it's NaOH. Okay, I mix these things together. So let's, let's do the major entities in solution. 
I only really have two things. Acetic acid. It's an acid, but it is a is it a strong acid or is it a weak acid? Mm -hmm. So so should we keep it the same or should we turn it into hydronium? What do you think? We should keep it the same, right? This thing is a weak acid, so it will ionize much less than 10%. So 95, 99% of it will still be that same thing. So we're gonna be left with, wrong color, CH3COOH aqueous. Perfect. Let's move on to the next thing. When I add sodium hydroxide to water, okay, is it sodium hydroxide? Yeah. Sodium hydroxide, if you buy a bottle of sodium hydroxide, you're, you're totally getting ripped off, man. It's not a bottle of sodium hydroxide. It's a bottle of sodium ions and what else? Hydroxide ions. And I'm going to be, I'm going to try and be very clear with you that any group one ionic compound will always break up. Any group one ionic compound. So lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium doesn't exist, so whatever, it doesn't matter. So there's also hydroxide here. And then what else? Water. Let's go through this list, and together, let's identify them as an acid, a potential acid, or a potential base. CH3, COOH, do you see it? in anywhere in the acid column. Yes. Yeah, you do, absolutely, right? CH3COOH, I see it right here in the acid column, just on, the, on page nine. Okay, perfect. Do you see it anywhere in the base column? No. No. So we're not gonna say that it can act as a base. This thing is an acid and an acid only. Okay, what about sodium ions? Do you see it anywhere in the acid or the base column? Um, no, it's black. It doesn't matter. Okay, so group one ions, for the most part, you just ignore. Hydroxide, do you see it anywhere in the acid column? No, no. Not in the acid column, no. but in the base column, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Base. Water, do you see it anywhere in the acid column? Yes. Yes, you do. So it's a potential acid. Do you see it anywhere in the base column? Yes. No. Yes, it's a potential base. Now, out of these things, right, what's our only two acids? H2O3. You know what I mean? Which one's stronger? This one or that one? I don't know. Which one's stronger, the higher one or the lower one? For acids, the higher one, right? So this is the strongest acid that we have in our solution. It's the strongest acid. Which one of the, what, what are our only two bases here? OH and Hydroxide and water. And uh, hopefully you can immediately recognize, I mean, hydroxide is the strongest base we can actually have, so it's the strongest base. Perfect. So that's, that's all the grunt work done. We've done all the hard work. Now it's easy peasy. Write the acid reacting with the base, and the acid transfers a proton to the base. And that's pretty much it, like for the most part. So our reaction is our, our strongest acid, CH3COOH, aqueous, reacting with our strongest base. What's our strongest base present? Hydroxide. Not sodium hydroxide, hydroxide. And what are we going to make? We're going to make water, right? It's called the slidey finger rule, if, you, if you've never seen it before. So this thing, if it donates a proton, what does it turn into? That thing. It's called the slidey finger rule, okay? So this, when this thing acts as an acid, it turns into that, right? And then hydroxide, when it acts as a base, what does it turn into? 
that thing right there, okay? So you transfer a proton from the acid to the base, so you're going to end up with H2O liquid and CH3CO aqueous. Now I've made, I've made some absolutely unforgivable sinful mistakes. Yeah, Jaden, because you put up your hand. I, man, I cannot, I cannot overemphasize that OH is not a thing. That's not a thing I've ever seen in my entire life, right? OH minus is a thing, right? Oh, that's, that's a world of difference. That's huge, bigly difference, right? Okay? So that, that exists, but OH doesn't exist, okay? Same as CH3COO. That doesn't exist. No. I don't, yeah, I don't know what that is. I will mark you wrong, right? CH3COO minus, that thing exists, right? Every chemical reaction must obey two laws. What are those two laws? The conservation of charge mass. and conservation of mass. Is mass being conserved? Yep. Yes, two carbons, two carbons, right? We're comparing the, the reactant to the product side. Two carbons, two carbons, five hydrogens, five hydrogens, three oxygens, three oxygens. Yes, mass is conserved, okay? Is charge conserved? What's the total, don't look at this side, okay? What's the total charge Add up all the charges on the left-hand side. What does that add up to be? Negative one, right? What does the other side add up to be? Negative, Negative one. one. Then we're good. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Okay, let's do uh, another example, and then I'm going to probably let you giddy up and do some stuff. Hydrochloric acid is treated with sodium carbonate. So just say a solution of hydrochloric acid is treated with sodium carbonate. So... Do you want to write out the formulas of these substances, or do you want to jump straight into the, the major entities? Let's write out the formulas. That's a really, really, like, it's not part of the steps, but it'll help you. What's hydrochloric acid look like? HCl. HCl aqueous. Good. Perfect. It's treated with sodium carbonate. Well, what's sodium carbonate? Why is it Na2CO3? Carbonate has a charge of 2 minus. Sodium has a charge of 1 plus. So you need two of those 1 pluses for the, for the carbonate. Just, just make sure we, we understand. Okay. So hydrochloric acid. Let's do our major entities. Hydrochloric acid. Does it exist in water? No. No. It doesn't. So what does exist? Hydronium exists. What else exists? When I put when I put hydrochloric acid in water, right? It it doesn't exist. So what does it turn into? It turns into chloride ions and it makes hydronium, right? Chloride ions Okay, that's, that's hydrochloric acid. What else? Sodium carbonate. Is it going to split up or is it going to stay together? It's going to split up. Why? It's an ionic, it's a group one ionic compound, right? So what are you going to get out of this? When this thing splits up, sodium carbonate turns into sodium ions and carbonate ions. Sodium ions and carbonate. What else do you have? You have a water as well. Let's label these as acids and bases, okay? Is hydronium, do you see it anywhere? Yeah. Do you see it anywhere on the acid table, like yes. the acid column? Yes, yeah, so it's an acid. Do you see it anywhere on the base column? No. No, okay. Chloride, do you see it anywhere on the acid side? No. No, do you see it anywhere on the base side? Yes. Yeah, but... 
it's it's the it's like one of those so weak bases that it doesn't really do anything. Okay, we can still label it as a base if you want to. It's, there's no harm in it. I just want you to understand that chloride ions don't do anything. You drink chloride ions all the time. You, you have it on your whatever, on your steak or on your eggs or on whatever. Sodium ions, to acid or base or nothing. 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 Carbonate, acid, base or nothing. Base. Base. Is it also an acid? No. No. Okay. Moving on. Water. Acid, base. Acid and base. Good. Which one of these is our strongest acid? Hydronium. Hydronium is the strongest acid you can have, right? As soon as you see it, boom, that's an acid. Awesome. Okay? What's our strongest base in here? CO3. It's the CO3 2 minus. It's the carbonate, our strongest base. So we'll take our, our strongest acid and our strongest base, and we will react them together with each other. So we take our strongest acid, H3O. Oh, that's the worst aqueous sign in the world. <laughs> and we react it with our carbonate. Remember, the acid gives a proton to the carbonate. So what's H3O plus going to turn into? H2O or water. And what's CO3 2 minus going to turn into? Hydrogen carbonate. Uh, HCO3 1 minus. Aqueous. And we actually forgot to do step 5 in that last, pro in that last reaction. What's step 5? Predict the extent of the reaction. Is it products or reactants here? Let's we'll do this one and, we, and then we can go back. Okay. Is this reaction uphill or downhill? Is this reaction uphill or downhill? It's downhill, right? Hydronium and carbonate. Hydronium is way, sorry, way up here. Carbonate is way down here. That's big time down here, right? So that will be greater than 50%. Or if you don't know your greater than and less than signs, you can literally write above it products favor. That would be fine. Products favor. What about this one up here? Was this uphill or downhill? Just double check. It was downhill. Downhill. So it's going to be greater than 50% as well, right? Good. Um, I'm going to get you to do some uh, practice for me. Uh, and then I'm going to talk to you. Uh, take, I don't know, take five or six minutes and just do these two questions. And I'm going to hand something out to you. Thank you.
What's what's a stronger base? Is the chloride a stronger base or is the water a stronger base? The water is the water steals the hydrogen and the water turns into hydrogen. And more hydrogen. Well, if an acid reacts with hydrogen, yeah, it will it will make at least a little bit of hydrogen. Okay, hey, well, let's 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 put let's put H2SO3 in some water. Okay? So you got water, and the water is trying to steal one of the hydrogens away from HSO3. Would you agree H2SO3 is just HSO3 with another hydrogen? So there's a tug of war between that hydrogen. This is pulling on it, and that's pulling on it. Who's gonna win the battle? So the HSO3 holds on to the proton. The water does not hold the proton. Okay? Maybe one out of a thousand times. But most of the time it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Did Sienna, did that make sense? Yeah. Right. Yeah. If it's a strong base, it would Well, if it'll dissolve in water, but the weak Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, weak bases stay the same. Weak, but like if you, if you add a weak base to something, like in your major entities, you just write whatever that weak base is. You know what I mean? Yeah, just start it. Yeah, so ammonia is ammonia. It's, it's, is it ionic? Can it split up into positive and negative ions? No, it's not ionic, right? And it's not a strong acid, so it can't split up. So, it's not an acid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you okay. Yeah. So these, yeah, those those are your major entities. Boom, oh, right there. So you've got ammonia and you've got water. So I, I understand why you said ammonia. I understand whoa. What's going on here? What's going on there? Why'd you split up the water? Why? Cut, pardon? No. Is this an ionic compound? Is it a metal and a non-metal? Yes. Yeah. It, okay. I'm going to ask a question, and I don't mean to be offensive. Do you know what an ionic compound is? Just say no. If you don't. Okay, that's fine. An ionic compound is something that is that is made from positive and negative ions being So like like sodium and chlorine or chloride, right? These positives are attracted to negatives, so they, they like each other. But when I when I put these in water, when I put this substance in water, the positive gets ripped away from the negative. Okay, so they, they separate from each other. The only reason why they separate, Laura, is because it's an ionic compound. Okay? So ionic compounds are positive ions and negative ions. Now I understand you want to write positive and negative, but this, this is a molecular compound. It doesn't split up. Okay. So it's, that just goes back to our major entity stuff. No, we're doing those first. Okay? 
because there's no point doing this unless we can do No, I keep forgetting to bring money. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Thank you for asking. Okay, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. Uh, um, for sure, example three with you, okay? Because it's relatively straightforward, and then and then we're gonna work on example four together. And that's it's just this is just practice, right? That's all we're gonna be talking about practice, okay? So, um, ammonia is added to water. So ammonia is NH three aqueous, and water is obviously H two O aqueous. Okay, I want to be very clear. What are the only things that can split up as soon as you put them into water. There's two things. Strong acids and ionic compounds. Soluble ionic compounds. Okay? Now, if you don't know what those are, then you have to come talk to me because there's no way you're going to be able to do this. There's no way you can do this unless you know what those two things are. Right? So if I just said something... Soluble ionic compounds. If you don't know what that is, oh man, you gotta come talk to me. It's okay if you don't know, but it's not okay if you don't learn it. Does that make sense? Okay. So this thing, can this thing split up into anything? No, it's a molecular compound. So in our major entities, you're gonna have NH3. <laughs> Can this thing split up into something? It's water, right? When you, when, you, when you pour a glass of water, are you like drinking hydrogen ions? Kind of, but not really, okay? Okay, let's do this. NH3, can NH3 act as an acid? No, but it can act as a base, right? Can this act as an acid? Yes, can it act as a base? Yes. Okay, our, what's our strongest base here? That's our strongest base, and this is our strongest acid. So react the acid with the base. So H2O reacts with NH3. So this is the acid, and that's the base. So we're going to donate a proton. We get OH minus and NH4 plus. Perfect. So that's two out of three. You get two marks out of three marks here. One for saying the major entities. If you want to skip the major entities and just do it in your head, you can. But, oh, man, you are in for a world of hurt if you get it wrong. Um, and then you get a mark for the reaction. Where's the third mark come from? If it's reacting If it's reactants favorite or products favorite. Is this uphill or downhill? It's, it's uphill. Let's see. Water's here, and ammonia's here. Going from left to right, that's uphill, right? We start with the acid. You always go left to right. You always start with the acid and end with the base. Okay. Yes. So, going from left to right. It's the same way you read a page, you know what I mean? It's just a natural progression. This is uphill, so that's reactant's favor. That's going to be a very hard reaction, so it's reactant's favor. So this is going to be less than 50%. Or if you want to say just react in favor, that's fine. Whatever. Really quickly. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if we have time. 
And me and me stalling isn't helping either. Okay. Um, yeah. Whatever. So, sodium hydrogen sulfite. That man. That is complicated. Sodium hydrogen sulfite. What the hell is sodium hydrogen sulfite? It's got sodium. It's got sodium ions, right? It starts with a metal, so it's ionic. It's got sodium ions, and then what else does it have? It's got everything else as one thing together. Hydrogen sulfate ions, sulfite ions. So it's got sodium ions. It's got hydrogen sulfate, which is HSO3 minus... And that's added to form Just a gas. reminder that tomorrow is the deadline to sign up for the Lake Louise ski trip. And there is only a few spots left. If you need more info, please go ask at the bookstore. Uh, okay. Um, I want to be very clear. I'm not here tomorrow. This is practice. This is not actually a homework check. I'm not going to check your homework. Okay. That, whatever. I want so badly to do a lab on Monday. I really, really want to do a lab. Now the sheet that I gave you, I would like you to try most of those predictions. Use the five-step method to predict those reactions. And we'll, we'll reassess this on Monday, okay? Have a good weekend.